Hey there, dirt bike people. I'm Chuck from TrueTech, and today I'm going to be assembling the bottom end on this 2006 YZ250, which I have put the modern X transmission into. If you're interested in seeing all the other mods that I did to this entire build, you can check it out on my channel. I've got everything in a playlist. So where we're starting off here is I've got the old crank bearings out as well as the transmission bearings and I got everything cleaned up. So I'm going to heat things up. I'm going to drop the bearings in and then we'll go on to the assembly. Ideally, I like to get the aluminum here up to about 150 to 200 Fahrenheit. That's hot enough so that the bearings should drop in nicely, but not so hot that the surface hardening on the bearings will get compromised. Here I'm just adding a little bit of two-stroke oil after you can see that the bearing just dropped right into the case. That is ideal. Now this first transmission bearing here, it's a 2RS seal. That means two rubber seals. I don't need the rubber seals, so I'm just going to pick them out so that the transmission oil can lubricate the bearing. In fact, none of these bearings that I'm installing are OEM bearings. I buy bearings by the bearing number and the internal clearance. They're all Japanese bearings and they cost me a fraction of what the OEM charges. Now on this bearing you can see that the heat didn't transfer quite as much as I thought it would and the bearing didn't slip in all the way. It's not a big deal. I just take this drift that I have with rounded ends and I lightly tap it in, being careful only to tap on the outer race. On this bearing again, I'm pulling out the seal and then I'm gonna add a little bit more heat so hopefully I can get the bearing just to drop in again. Now two of these bearings have little retainers, so a little bit of Loctite on each bolt and then we can move on to the left side case. All these retainer bolts are 10 Newton meters or 7.2 foot pounds. Now it's the same deal on this side, heat it up to 150 to 200 Fahrenheit, drop all the bearings in, tap a little bit if you need to, same torque on the retainers and we're ready to drop the crank in. Now here I'm going to deviate from the manual. It doesn't really have an effect on the rest of the installation. You can do pretty much the same steps on the left as on the right and I'll talk a little bit more as we go about why I'm making this change but the big thing that I really want to avoid is using a puller to get the crank into the bearings. I really like to use heat if I can. I deliberately use a heat gun here because overheating the bearing is very easy. If the bearing turns blue it's junk. It's very easy to damage it with a flame. I normally shoot for 130 Fahrenheit. The transmission can be pretty intimidating but once you break it down into its parts it's pretty easy. Put the two shafts together and drop them in their holes. Now we just got to figure out the shift forks. First of all you'll notice that the rear shaft has two grooves for shift forks and the front shaft only has one. The forks that go on the rear shaft are labeled L and R. So all that's left at that point is just making sure that the pins point towards the shift drum. Now the practical problem that we run into is if we put the shift drum in, then it's really difficult to have enough room to put the shift forks in. But if we put the shift forks in, then we can't get the shift drum in. So what I do to combat that is I slide the shift forks onto the shafts, but I don't slide the pins into the cases. I just rotate the shift forks away from the shift drum a little bit, and that allows me to slide them in and then just hook everything together. Now you may have noticed at this point that there are three pins on the shift forks and there are also three corresponding grooves in the shift drum. Now that the shift forks are in the case, you can clearly see which one is the bottom, middle, and top. Now the end with the pin on it goes down towards the right, and that sets the position of the star wheel on the right-hand side. Now it does take a little bit of tapping and a little bit of rotating and a little bit of wiggling back and forth, but once you get the pins into the shift fork, everything should be fine and the transmission should rotate easily. Now in the manual, they want you to use a special Yamaha puller to pull the crank into the left side and then drop it into the right side. That's totally fine, but you can also do it this way. Drop the case onto this assembly that we have here and then pull it down. It's also very easy to make your own puller with just a piece of pipe, a stack up of washers and a nut. If you're gonna do that though, make sure that you pull on the inner race, not on the outer race. If you pull on the outer race, you're gonna side load the bearing and ruin it. Now before we start gluing the cases together, make sure that you put in your O-ring and both of your dowel pins. Now we can start gluing our cases together. This is not the time to use cheap silicone. Three Bond has several different options and Loctite 5910 works really well as well. You want a nice thin, even coat all the way around on both case halves. That way if you miss a little spot, you'll get it from the other side. Now as we finish gluing this case, I'm gonna get a little bit of a head start. Instead of using a Yamaha puller or a homemade puller, I'm just gonna use heat. I'm gonna get my bearing up to about 130 Fahrenheit again. And if I do everything right, it'll just drop right into place. If I don't get it quite right, I can always use the puller as a backup. If everything goes right, I'll just grab the case, flip it over, slide it down, and it will just drop right into place. Bingo. Now back to this left side, right side thing. As I put these bolts in, the bearing on the left side that I heated up is already cooling down and it's clamping itself onto the crank. That means that as I tighten these bolts up, I'm introducing a small amount of side load to the crank bearings. Now when I'm all finished up and I go to rotate the crank, it feels like there's quite a bit of resistance. It is not smooth. So our current situation is the crank is pushing outward on the main bearings. So all I need to do is relieve that pressure. And I'm gonna do it in a very non-traditional way. 
and you can see that tension is completely gone. Now, as I put a little two-stroke oil down on the bottom end here, we'll talk about this a little bit more. Here's a picture of the OEM Yamaha crank puller. You can see that it bottoms out against the case, not against the inner race. The advantage with this puller is that when it's all said and done, the crank bearings have no side load. But during the process, it puts a tremendous amount of load on the bearings. The effect on the bearings is the same as if you were just to pull the crank cases together with the bolts. If you use a puller that pulls against the inner race like it should, it's very easy to pull too far and then tapping them will make it worse. Now none of this prevents me from assembling the engine in the left hand case half, but the right side case half has a nice flat surface and it sits on my 2x4s a lot better. If I use a crank puller, I have to stand the cases up and risk having my transmission all fall out. With this method, I can have the engine sitting in one spot the whole time and I keep the side loading to an absolute minimum. It's also just a lot less work. Now before I call any bottom end job finished, I need to make sure that it's shifting properly. Here's the little nub on the end of the shift drum. It's going to go right into that little slot. We're going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on it and torque it down to 30 Newton meters or 22 foot pounds. Next is this little detent lever and the torque on that is 10 Newton meters or 7.2 foot pounds. I use my little flat blade screwdriver to pry the spring into place. Now I can use my 12 mil T-handle to shift it through the gears. You should expect it to be a little bit notchy and you'll have to spin the gears as you shift them. Once we verify that the transmission is operating properly, all that's left is just to install the seals. I leave them for last because if you're installing a crank into a seal, it's much easier to fold the lip over. I put a little bit of grease into the inner lip and slide it down flush with the case. In this case, I don't mind putting a little bit of grease on the outside of the seal as well because the retainers will keep it in. Now just gently work the seal down and make sure it's flush with the case. I like to finish it with this drift I have. That way I can be sure that it's flush with the case. Now we can drop these retainers on and we're off to the left side. Again, these are 10 Newton meters or 7.2 foot pounds. Now with this left side crank seal, I'm only gonna lube the inside. When there's nothing retaining the seal, I want a bunch of friction between the seal and the case so that it doesn't blow out under crankcase pressure. Now the rest of the seals are all the same procedure, so I need to talk about why I'm so anal about making sure that the seal goes flush with the case. Obviously, if the seal isn't installed all the way in, or if it's installed sideways, it can leak or pop out. However, if the seal gets pushed too far in, it's even more dangerous. If the seal gets pushed so far in that it touches the crank bearing, which is only about an extra millimeter, it will heat up the crank bearing and cause it to fail. I've actually seen this exactly with the YZ250 and the bike had six hours on it. The right side assembly video should be coming out next week, followed by the top end assembly video. If you like this content, subscribe, hit the notification bell, find me on Instagram, or just watch a bunch of the other videos. I'm sure YouTube will get the idea.